If you go to any Jewish home on a Friday night, you'll enjoy the taste of the beautiful traditional Friday night bread. This is called by many names, depending on what Jewish community you're in. In some places, such as South Africa, it's called Kitka. In most places around the world, it's referred to as Chala. And in almost every instance, it is a braided bread. And in fact, some have the custom that each of the two breads has six braids, which would then give you a total of 12. Where did this custom come from? And it seems to be related to what we learn about in this week's parsha, when the Torah tells us about the magnificent Mishkan, the tabernacle, the portable temple that the Israelites carried with them throughout their sojourn in the wilderness. One of the furnishings in the Mishkan in the tabernacle was the Shulchan HaZahav, a beautiful table made with acacia wood covered in gold. And upon this table was placed each Shabbat, every single week of the year, 12 loaves, six piled on one side and six piled on the other side. And so it was, the custom came about that when we have our Shabbat bread, to braid it six times to remember the loaves that were brought in the temple every single week. These loaves, after they had been on the table for a week, were taken off and were shared by the Kohanim, the priests on duty. What was the meaning behind this particular mitzvah, this commandment? Why was there this need to put this bread on the table each and every week? The Sefer HaChinuch, one of our great commentators, explains as follows. We obviously want God to bless the work of our hands. We want our crops to be abundant. We want our food to be blessed. And therefore God says to us, if you engage in my bread, as it were, in my holy bread, if you do a mitzvah commandment with my bread, then that will bring blessing to your bread. As it were, it's almost as if these 12 loaves were the source of all blessing for all bread worldwide. And therefore, if the Jewish people remain committed to this particular method of bringing these 12 loaves, God would in turn bring blessing to the bread that they would enjoy in their own home. But I think it goes a step further. The Talmud tells us something incredible. When the temple existed, atonement was brought to the nation through the altar, the altar on which the different sacrifices were brought. A person did a sin, they brought a sin offering. There was the guilt offering, there were the offerings of the community. The altar was the place that brought about, as it were, atonement for the nation. Now, says the Talmud, that we have no temple, where does our kapora, our atonement, come from? The Talmud answers, from the table, from a person's table. This is how one earns atonement. How do you get atonement, cleansing, forgiveness of sin through your table? And Rashi tells us in his commentary on the Talmud, it is through doing kindness to guests, to having guests around your table, and specifically those guests who are poor and have no place to eat. Hospitality, the way in which we treat the downtrodden, that's what brings us our atonement. So the altar in our homes is our dining room table. And let me end with a very beautiful comment by Rabbeinu Bechaya on this topic. Rabbeinu Bechaya was a great Spanish sage that lived in the Middle Ages. And in this parasha, when he's speaking about the table, he says that he heard of a fascinating custom that the pious people, the pious Jews of France used to do. That they would leave in their will, they would tell their children, when I die one day, take the dining room table, turn it into a coffin and bury me in that coffin. What was the idea behind that? The idea was you can't take anything with you. You can't take your riches with you, your clothing, your possessions, but you can take your good deeds with you to the next world. And that was the idea. Bury us in our dining room table because on that table we hosted so many people. We brought cheer to those who were downtrodden. We looked after the needs of those who were needy, poor, who didn't have anything. And that's how one brings atonement. So when you take a bite this Friday night of your Shabbos challah, remember that it's not just a piece of bread, but it's something that brings blessing into our lives. I wish you a Shabbat Shalom.